can one know that through which everything is known? How can one know the knower? Namaste. So I want to introduce a new series. <laughs> Well, why are you starting a new series, Dave? You haven't finished all the old ones. I know, there are at least a dozen or maybe more video series that we started but never really got completed. And the reason is this. Yes, I could go on grinding away at each of these unfinished series, but the point is to get you started and that you will take up the study on your own initiative. In each of these series, I have given links to the original materials that you can download. And even I have given liquid text projects where all the important parts are already highlighted and so on. So we're going to start this new series on the Panchadashi by Sri Vidyarana. Vidyaranya was a disciple of Shankaracharya. And after Shankaracharya had outlined clearly and in depth the philosophy of Advaita, Keval Advaita, unmixed with any other philosophy, pure Advaita, then Vidyarana wrote a manual for the students. Now, yes, there are other similar books like Atma Bodha, but they are on a more or less superficial level, whereas the Panchadashi goes deep into the philosophy uh, to the very depths, to the very bottom, and explains everything clearly in the proper terminology with copious examples and even takes care of so many doubts and other confusions that may crop up on the path. The name, Panchadashi, means 15. And the work is composed in 15 chapters. And just to read the names of the chapters will give you an idea of the contents of the work. Chapter 1. Differentiation of the Real Principle, Chapter 2, Differentiation of the Five Elements, Chapter 3, Differentiation of the Five Sheaths, Chapter 4, Differentiation of Duality, Chapter 5, Fixing the Meaning of the Great Sayings, Chapter 6, The Lamp of the Picture, Chapter 7, The Lamp of Perfect Satisfaction, Chapter 8, the Lamp of Kutasta, Chapter 9, The Lamp of Meditation, and Chapter 10, The Lamp of the Theater. Chapter 11 is The Bliss of Yoga, Chapter 12, The Bliss of the Self, Chapter 13, The Bliss of Non-Duality, Chapter 14, The Bliss of Knowledge, and Chapter 15, The Bliss of Objects. This is, so far in my investigations of Advaita, the most complete, comprehensive, and accurate work that explains the philosophy even to a beginner. And even though it gets into detailed explanations, it bases those on a firm foundation given in the first couple of chapters, such that if you study carefully, anyone can understand. Now, it's very interesting. Brahman is known as Sat Chit Ananda. That is, eternal existence, unlimited knowledge or consciousness, and unlimited bliss. Now, these are not separate. They are one. Because why do we suffer in material life? Primarily because of death. The fear of death and situations that might lead to it. But in Brahman, there is Sat, 
unlimited existence, no birth, no death, no such thing as non-existence. So because of that, it has unlimited consciousness. Although its consciousness is turiyatita, consciousness of itself alone, knowledge of the self. This is turiya. And turiyatita means unlimited knowledge of oneself. So Brahman, because it is eternally existing and is never non-existent or limited or bounded in any way, has complete knowledge of itself, complete awareness, awareness of awareness. This is Turiya. And finally, Ananda. Because there is unlimited existence and consciousness, there is also complete bliss. And nothing to be sad about. <laughs> nothing is ever lost to Brahman. Everything is there within it. So the 15 chapters are also divided up into these three qualities. The first five chapters describe Sat. The second five chapters, Chit, the bliss of knowledge. And the final five chapters, the Ananda, the happiness derived from realization of Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi, this saying is described in detail and analyzed from every possible point of view. Aham Brahma Asmi is also correlated with Sat, Chit, and Ananda. I am is Sat, Aham, I am. What am I? Brahman. So that's Chit, I know myself. And finally, Ananda, Asmi, means again, I am, but in a different way. How am I? I am full of bliss. As Brahman, there are no negatives, there are no sorrows, there are no fears, because there is no other. There is no change. Brahman is complete and full in every way. So this series may begin slowly. As I am traveling and in the midst of relocating, I finally found a house, by the way, and we'll be renovating it and moving into it later on. But this series will give a solid foundation and then a full explanation and finally explicit instructions on how to attain and realize Brahman, which is the ultimate purpose of the Vedas, the ultimate goal of human life, the purpose of all existence, and the cause of the universe. So this is our upcoming project. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.